Honorable Mayors, ladies and gentlemen, cities which bear the brunt of repressive national and international drug control policies are growing quickly. The total urban population will represent almost 70% of the world population in 2050. Illicit drug markets induced by prohibition, war on drugs and drug trafficking, the most profitable illicit economy in the world, generates organized crime, threatening public health, public safety, violating human rights, fostering discrimination, mainly in cities and on urban population, and thus undermining democracies and wasting billions of taxpayers' money. Drug prohibition even more results in mass incarceration around the globe, which has dramatic impact not only at human rights, but also at social and economic development. Former UN Secretary General Kofi Annan, the former member of the Global Commission on Drug Policy, has stated, criminal record of drug user is a lifetime penalty. Drugs are dangerous, but current narcotic policies are even a bigger threat because punishment is a given a greater priority than health and human rights. It's time for regulation that put lives and safety first. It's time to anticipate that the war on drugs has failed. Scientific evidence and hard data are convincing, proving this dramatic political failure. What data shows? In 2019, 275 million people used drugs. This accounts for a 22% increase compared to 2010. More than 11 million people are estimated to have injected drugs. 1.4 million people of them are estimated living with HIV and 5.6 million with hepatitis C. Drug use increased far more rapidly in low and middle income countries compared to high income countries. About 585,000 people died in 2017 as a result of drug use. More than half of those deaths were a result of untreated hepatitis. Most of these deaths were and are preventable. 16.6% of all sentenced prisoners around the globe are incarcerated for non-violent drug offenses in general just for use or for possession of substance for personal use. Among the population groups most affected by the drug problem but also by the spread of HIV, hepatitis C, tuberculosis are people held in prisons. The retail size and profits of illicit drug markets are estimated to 350 billion of US dollars annually. This size is approximately the same one compared to licit markets with alcohol, tobacco and cereals all together. Moreover, there is another important phenomenon. Uh, current economic crisis, as well as the war in Ukraine, confront us with many social, political, ethical, as well as philosophical problems. One of the most important ones, according to my opinion, is the emergence of a new conservative era and a thinking. It seems that many Europeans lost faith in the modern liberal welfare state and its pragmatic approach to solving complex social phenomena. There is an emerging trend which I see around the Europe of intolerance 
and political agendas with the promise to restore the law and order. In this new era, people who use drugs are, according to my opinion, even more vulnerable to stigma and social exclusions than ever. There is a risk that Euro European cities will sacrifice their unquestionable achievements in the field of drug policy at the altar of political populism. Many local policymakers have historically helped to drive drug control policy, trying to minimize unintended negative consequences of international drug control regimes. Since the uh, 1930s, they opposed the prohibition of less potent drugs and drew attention to the impact of criminalization on the rule of law in North America. In the 1980s, they faced or we faced the HIV crisis driven by drug injection and needle sharing practices. Since then, many European cities have introduced harm reduction policies aimed at minimizing the negative impact of psychoactive substance use, whether it's legal or illegal. It's time to empower you, mayors, local decision makers, city representatives, to actively enter the drug policy reform. In the capacity of the Lord Mayor of Prague, wonderful capital of the Czech Republic, I had the chance to draft the Prague Declaration, which was a document and at the same time a sort of a political challenge for urban drug policy reform. Between 2002 and 2010, in these eight years, I had the adventurous opportunity to successfully implement this public health-centered policy in day-to-day -day practice. Prague, Decu uh, Prague Declaration document is simple. Challenging seven principles of effective drug policy reform at the local urban level. Number one. No size fits all. Local drug policies must have space for experiment. There is no so-called golden bullet strategy suitable for everybody, for every local government. Please start to experiment. Number two, realism is the key. Drug-free word does not exist Educate, please, and convince your partners, your counterparts, your opposition to stop dreaming and wishful thinking. In other policy areas, as a local politicians and decision makers, we are acting obviously very pragmatically. So let's do the same also in drug policy area. Number three. Human rights apply to ill people in particular. These ill people, they deserve help, support and treatment, not decriminalization. Number four, public health and public safety concerns must not be seen as contradictory. Interventions that are effective for public health are also beneficial for the safety of communities. Number five, evidence-based decisions only. Scientific evidence and pragmatic experience over ideology and wishful thinking, which already brought so much human lives, losses and people's suffering. Number six and seven, evaluation, monitoring, and information exchange. It's the must for assessment and constant improvement. Please evaluate, monitor all your initiatives, adventurous experiments, innovations, because once you prove 
the effectiveness. It's the guarantee for sustainable development and constant improvement. Supervised drug consumption facilities, opioid substitution treatment, drug-assisted therapy for amphetamine users, needle exchange schemes, outreach work, take-home naloxone programs, heroin-assisted programs for those falling out from OSTs, cannabis social clubs, and many other possibilities for responsible and innovative drug policy reform already exist and proved in Europe and also in other countries around the globe to be effective. But you may also explore other original and innovative strategies which are suitable and specific, particularly just for your city. I wish you a good luck. Good luck in your human rights based and public health centered adventure. Thanks to Susanna Ronconi for inviting me to challenge you with the experience from Prague. I wish you great success to Forum Urban Drug Policy Gathering and enjoy your adventure.